For a second, let's talk about the difference between photographs and pictures. Now, I know a lot of people watching this class, especially in the creative live space, are photographers. Now, this is a fine line that I have to walk because let's face it, anybody can take a picture today. We've all got cameras. All of you right now probably have cameras in your pockets. Everybody watching has at least one camera around them because our phones can take beautiful photos. And anybody who says that the iPhone doesn't take really good photos hasn't really, doesn't know what they're doing. Because I have canvas prints blown up on my wall that I've taken with my iPhone or Android. I'm not going to play favorites. Sorry, I'm a Mac guy. It's just the way it is. Uh, but sometimes a lot of that is just pictures. We're taking snapshots. We're taking pictures around us. Instagram created this whole new world of taking, you know, it's the, pol it's the digital Polaroid. We just take pictures and share them. There's nothing wrong with that. But photographs, taking a photograph is a skill. Photographers have a skill, and in today's world, it's killing me. It's my little PSA announcement. When things like the Chicago paper fires all their photojournalists because they think a reporter with an iPhone can do the same thing, it crushes me. It makes me sad. But anybody can become a photographer. I'm not saying that. But I'm just saying, especially as a business, you need to think about the fact that sometimes there's nothing wrong with a casual snapshot, and those can be beautiful. But there is a time sometimes you need a photograph. Product shots are a perfect example. You need the glamour shot of your, of your product or service, whatever you're doing. But sometimes snap, so there's that balancing act. And I want to talk about, I want you to just think about it as you're going forward. I don't want any small business to be scared of using photographs because they don't have the latest equipment or they don't have the budget to buy a big camera. You don't need that. But at the same time, there are times when you need to hire a photographer, when you, need, when you do need those skills. And it's not, we're going to talk about this more, it's not about the camera, right? It's about the person and what they're doing with it. I can give the most top of the line camera to anybody and they won't be able to, they'll take, they'll take snapshots. On the flip side, I can give a little point and shoot camera to one of the best photographers in the world and they'll take gorgeous photographers because it's the eye of the photographer and you can develop that over time. But I just want to make sure because I always, I always get worried. I always get worried about my friends who are photographers and they're out of work. And I'm like, and I sit here and I'm like, yeah, anybody can take pictures. And then I feel bad that they're, they're going to hunt me down and yell at me because <laughs> like, yeah, but Cece, we need work. And they do need work. So there's, there's a balancing act. So think about that. Think about that sometimes having someone with a better eye than you is great. Events are a perfect example. If you're doing events, event photography is a very, sp I, I am not good at event photography. I hire people to do that, especially if you're a business and you, you're running the business. You don't want to think about taking, oh, let me stop and take pictures of the event. Perfect example where you need a photographer or a wedding, I, yeah. There's gonna be eight million snapshots at every single wedding, but we still hire wedding photographers because they know what to get and they know how to get it.